Well, hi, it's Steve. Welcome to the Murder Monday podcast. Hope you are having a great week. If you're listening uh, today, when I'm recording this, which is a Monday, because I recorded this yesterday and the audio quality was screwed up, so I'm having to redo it. Have you had that happen to you when you're working on something and it, you go to save it and then when you open it back up, there's something wrong with it? Well, that's what happened to me with this audio file, so... This is round number two <laughs> for me for the Murder Monday podcast. So thanks for listening and fingers crossed when I'm done with this version that when I save it, it doesn't sound like it did before. Anyway, <laughs> let's get to the new Murder Monday. Uh, it's from a case from the 1970s that took quite a while to solve, but there will be a conclusion. Hi, this is Steve. This is the Murder Monday podcast, and this is called Beautiful Young and murdered. Ah, to be beautiful, young, and own a motorcycle. In 1974, 21-year-old Cheryl Miller looked like a pinup. Her blonde hair went past her shoulders, her smile lit up a room. Cheryl, a popular art student, looked just like one of the cheerleaders that you'd see in a movie from back then. She lived on campus and had more than her fair share of suitors. And just to add a bit more interest, guys fawned over the fact that she had a motorcycle that she rode around campus. As she'd speed by, guys were left slack-jawed at the beauty. It was near the end of the semester and Cheryl, who was rarely single, was actually back on the market. She had broken up with her boyfriend, a foreign exchange student from Iran named Abess. It was June 14th and that evening, Cheryl went to the scene bar with a group of friends, including her roommate, Maxine. Well, at the bar, they ran into her ex, a best, but didn't really interact with him. And later that night, Cheryl decided to go home while Maxine decided to keep partying. Maxine, the roommate, got home at 6 a.m. When she walked in the apartment, she found Cheryl dead on the floor. Bruised and beaten. Scratches and cuts on her face, neck, and lips. It looked like a break-in. The window screen was pulled out, and due to the wind from the storm the evening before, the curtains were hanging outside. Cheryl had been sexually assaulted and strangled to death. Police turned their focus on her boyfriend, the foreign exchange student. Cheryl's family said that she chose to break up with this man because he had not quite the temper. But this wasn't the only man that police questioned. While doing the autopsy, police found dark hairs on her body. Her ex had dark hairs, as did another man that she was seeing her roommate, Maxine's cousin. There was a third man she was into. He was six years older than Cheryl. His name was Gabriel, and he openly said that he had had a sexual relationship with Cheryl in the weeks leading up to the murder, but he was blonde and he was gone the night of the murder. He was actually on his honeymoon over an hour away with his new wife, a fact that she confirmed. Police had three suspects. Lead, the Iranian ex-boyfriend. There was a problem, he was gone. He actually moved out of his apartment a week early, sold his car, went to Detroit, got on a plane and flew back to Iran before police could ever question him. Cheryl Miller was a young girl with her entire life ahead of her. And now she was the victim of murder. Who was responsible? Was it the man she had just broken up with? Maybe the married man? Or could it be her roommate's cousin that she had a short but steamy relationship with? We'll find out next on Murder Monday. Twenty-one-year-old Michigan college student Cheryl Miller was found assaulted and strangled to death in her apartment after hanging out with friends, including her ex, the evening before at the Scene Bar in Saginaw, Michigan. The blonde-haired, blue-eyed girl was amused to many, and she told her parents that she had decided to break up with her boyfriend, an Iranian man, a week earlier due to his temper. When her body was found at 6 a.m. the next morning by her roommate, Maxine, police determined that she had been dead for just a short time, maybe just 30 minutes to an hour. And when they did an autopsy, they found that the killer had dark hair. A few days later, police went to speak to her ex, an Iranian foreign exchange student, and arrest him, but... He was gone. There were two critical pieces of evidence that linked the ex-boyfriend to the crime scene. First, his fingerprint on a rail leading up to the room and dark hair which looked just like his on Cheryl Miller's body. They believed it was his hair because 
they found one of his old hairbrushes and it looked very similar. The ex was arrested in Iran and extradited back to America where his hairs were collected by US investigators, but the hair wasn't a match to that on the body. And that's when the case went cold because police were never able to find a match to the hair and the case stayed cold for 20 years. We all know that not all secrets stay secrets. Numerous people came forward to point the finger at one person, the man that they said killed Cheryl Miller. Gabriel Ferris, the newlywed. He was supposed to be 65 miles away the night of the murder. His new wife even corroborated the story, but 20 years later they had split and she reported telling a new story. Waking up just after 7 a.m. on the first morning of their honeymoon to her husband walking back into the hotel. She knew something was wrong. He had blood on his shirt and he said he was upset because he had hit a rabbit with his car and when trying to clean it up, he had gotten it all over himself. Suspect? Sure. But it wasn't a smoking gun. The smoking gun came from the almost dozen people that he told, as well as what he did the day after Cheryl Miller's murder. That evening, he was back on his honeymoon with his new wife when Cheryl Miller's image came up during the 11 o'clock news. Some 20 years later, when his wife took the stand at his hearing, she said, quote, he got up real close to the television, and when it was talking about Cheryl Miller, he was touching the television and making noises like he was crying. There were no tears. He wasn't crying. He was pretending to cry. He told me that was the last girlfriend he had had before me. Prosecutors would go on to claim that jealousy was the motive behind the murder. Gabriel Ferris had set up a date with Cheryl Miller the night before the wedding, his so-called stag night. Apparently to have relations with her once more before becoming a married man, Ferris later told police that his wife-to-be had kept such a close eye on him that night that he couldn't get away to see his girlfriend, Cheryl Miller. Prosecutors then theorized that Ferris decided to see Cheryl Miller at his very next opportunity, which turned out to be the first night of his honeymoon, the last night of her life. Almost 30 years after Cheryl Miller's body was found by her roommate Maxine, Gabriel Ferris was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. <laughs>